This episode is sponsored by Wild Chips. Wild Protein Chips check all the boxes. Nutrition, taste, and real ingredients. Get 20% off your first order at wildbrands.com. That's W-I-L-D-E brands.com. And use the code WILDFIT20 to get 20% off. Welcome back to the Cross Games Podcast. I'm your host, Chase Ingham, and I'm with J-Mac. I am so happy you are on the show. Before we even get started, because we're going to talk semifinal venues, the where, the why, the how. But do you have a friend? I mean, you've been, you've been in a lot of circles where nicknames are a thing, whether it's yeah. uh, but call signs, firehouse names. Yeah. You are that friend for me that you are Jim. <laughs> And I legitimately, okay. full disclosure, I don't even know your full real name. I have called you this for ever since I have known you. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so for the fans, uh, what would say? Name and title, sir. For <laughs> name and title. Uh, well, so the, the nickname, is, it's really not that complicated. It's derivative of the full name. So John McLaughlin. Mm-hmm. Um, so Johnny Mac is where you get that kind of condensed down. Um, it's either been Johnny or J Mac for a very long time. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, I work for CrossFit Been with CrossFit since about started in 2005 myself, but, you know, with CrossFit yeah. since about 2007, eight and seminar stuff. So, uh, yeah. And now I am a senior manager of all the, uh, the events and stuff that we do. So all the live competitions and licensing. Mm-hmm. Classes. And what's cool about it, those of us that have been in the game for a while, and, and you are certainly one of those figures for, for me too, because you were one of those guys I, I looked up to coming into, especially on the training department side and then the sports side and just it, it, working semifinals together and wondering if I could pull the 405 cold. And you're like, yeah, go ahead and do it. <laughs> those old Southeast regional things. But um, I correct that term. The Southeast regional is known as what? The Dirty South. Dirty Thank you South. Very much. Yes, yes. I, I know the rules. Even if you disqualify me in a deadlift competition, on a, <laughs> it's fine. I've gotten over it. I've gotten over it. You're hanging on to that, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I just can't let it go. Damn okay, you, buddy. Bobby. It's okay, buddy. <laughs> but uh, what I love about this is that when you, when you think of kind of the 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 OGs coming in back in the day and and what we're or you guys are doing now is that. You just find your way in the need that arises, and then you meet that need. How how has you how have you felt your journey has been since getting into CrossFit back in 05 and and really where you've come to now with what you're doing for CrossFit on the sports side? Ooh, wow, we're supposed to be under an hour with this. That could take all that time right there. But uh, well, this is I'll try. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> it won't involve this. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about my journey and I think I'll, I can summarize in some of that. So uh, I've been very fortunate that I've had about every opportunity there is with CrossFit. Um, so uh, I, I've been to every one of the CrossFit games except for one. Uh, I've competed as an athlete uh, in Aromas. I've uh, been a judge, a head judge, seminar staff, um, one of the first regional directors, um, directed all the regionals. Um, help you know run and organize the, the games itself uh so a lot with the train department a lot with the sport department um i've coached at affiliates i've never owned an affiliate but i've, mm-hmm. I've done many years of coaching at affiliates um so i've got a chance to wear all the hats so i've had an opportunity with everything that is that is crossfit um specific to kind of the the, the full circle right now and, and at least with sport um you know i think it's just the it's the, the growth and maturity that we've gone to for so mm-hmm. many years so there has been a lot of lessons learned. There's been a lot of events. There's been a lot of mistakes. There's been a lot of wins. There's been a lot of amazing people. Um, so all of it together in its totality, you know, it's kind of like just the maturing of what the sport is. Mm-hmm. And I like what you said of lessons learned. And I think that is a really major jumping off point as we get into these semifinal venues and locations, equipment lists yeah. is lessons learned. Really the most recent ones of maybe the last two years of semifinals of the seating processes and all the unknown that came into where athletes are going. And I think I put a, a big stress on the event directors and you having that experience that you'd laid out, I, I think works beautifully in all of your experience to what you're doing now. And, and what were some of those lessons we learned over the last two seasons that led to the decision, the early releases and the, the system that we have in place now? 
All right. So if we're looking at a snapshot of the, la of the last two years, lesson we learned. So um, negate a conversation on what the COVID impact was. So mm -hmm. we'll only speak of just, you know, the event space and, and right. the event world and, uh, and our, our presence with a qualifying stage in the CrossFit Games, um, known as semifinals. Um, there was a uh, there was a, a lot of, of intended um, apply of best practice for partnerships. Mm -hmm. But without a uh, without a lot of ownership and, you know, and, and of the oversight. So um, uh, the first generation of semifinals was, you know, really a licensed event and, uh, you know, and, and were there to help support in many ways. Um, and, and it was a uh, it was it was somewhat successful. Um, but I think in in all of its totality, uh, there were a lot of events spread over all the world with athletes especially in the uh, the european and north american continents you know being placed in 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 some difficult situations um mm -hmm. you know not knowing where to go where to be when they're going to be there you know there was a lot of uh, the athlete uh experience was kind of difficult um uh, working within all of those different independent entities that are licensed events um was was a lot of work and and uh it was fun. It was amazing because most right. of these people we knew very well. And we right. would show up at the events and it'd be like, oh, this is a homecoming on a small scale. Mm -hmm. um, they had a really good regional feel to them. Um, but, you know, they were owned and operated by a bunch of independent um, operators and, you know, and we were partners with them. Um, so uh, it was it wasn't that it was a uh, a test or a study. Um, it was uh, it was a, a very uh, well intended um, approach to, uh, to offering an experience in that time of season where the greatest part of the community had total involvement. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it added some it added some layers of difficulty for even the event organizers, for the athletes, uh, for the partnerships, for just the fans who wanted to come to the events. Yeah, um, you know there was all of those things, and it was still and I, you can't negate it. It was still impacted by you know COVID and travel and everything oh, else. Sure. Were, were all big parts of it. Yeah, still, mm -hmm. still, there's still some of that out there. Um, so it was, uh, it was, a, it was a really good study and, uh, and we learned as much from that, probably as much as we learned from kicking off and just trying to do our own regional sanctional yeah. elements and, you know, owned and operated throughout the, all those early years. So, um, uh, new iteration, lost learned. I like what you put the, you through the community thing out there, because when we, oh, we yeah. look at the open exclusively, like, and just the heart of CrossFit, it, we say that word a lot, but that word means so much beyond just that, right? It's like, oh, you say that all the time. I was like, there's a reason why we say community. There's a reason why the Open is a worldwide competition, the largest sporting event collectively that there yeah. is on the planet. But when we speak about community, it's the bedrock of everything that we do, whether it's for sport, but majority for the affiliates and what we're trying to accomplish here when we think about CrossFit exclusively. And I look at these decisions you guys just made on, hey, we're going to have it early. We're going to draw some regional boundaries. We're going to know where people are going to go before the season even kicks off based off where they leave geographically with some exceptions. And then we've, we've talked about some of that in, in previous episodes. But this move, especially when you talk about early announcements, drawn lines, know where people go, I think this is a huge lift for the community as fans and athletes alike do you how much do you guys look at these decisions of early announcements and, and clear defining lines of where people are going to go for that community and that fan perspective um well obviously i hope a lot but i mean the 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 the, the shouts from from mountaintops you know and we listen to all that input that you know they're sharing with us and you know and i think that's uh that was part of it um listening better understanding you know what really what re knowing from really way back from the regionals what it is that makes that those events as special as they were mm -hmm. um, a local community that knows where and when they're going to be and they show up in force um, each of those gyms representing their athletes that are all right there um, I mean I, I could the hair will stand on my arms I started talking about some of the, the the early regional days of some of the events that we had and what the crowd and everything felt like and oh, it yeah. was just really a close close knit group of people that all had they all had presence and they all had a, a really legit reason for being there and uh, and they all had you know involvement you know personal involvement there was something there for them personally be it somebody that they knew where they were competing as an athlete or just you know that they wanted to be part of it and that was their region 
Mm-hmm. Um, so I think then just move forward to currently, uh, well, why not let all that information be available as soon as possible? Yeah. We gave breath to the open, you know, seven weeks earlier than we probably ever had. And then uh, we're 24 hours out, but yet we're still in December. And all of the first live stage of qualifying for the CrossFit Games is already known. We never did that back in regional days. We were lucky to have <laughs> yeah. the events in like March, <laughs> right. March, April. I remember <laughs> one year we didn't, we didn't have a venue. We were like four weeks out. We're like, <laughs> You know, we're like, we're struggling right now. Yeah. It's going to be a surprise. It's supposed to be in this state, but we don't know exactly where yet. Somewhere Uh, around here. Yeah. So, (laughs) yeah. So we have, we've given life to the open and to the semifinals stages uh, significantly earlier than we ever have. Um, Mm -hmm. And that was a big goal. And, and again, it's because it is better for the community. It's better for the athletes and it even, it's even better for um, the event organizers, you know, those that we're partnering with our partners and sponsors. I mean, everybody wins in a scenario when it's all planned out much yes. farther in advance. Yes. Yes. Uh, before we get to where the locations are actually at, mm-hmm. when you look at where to host something and what are the few, I'm sure this list is long, but uh, what are the big things you guys look at that, you know, is venue friendly for the event that you're supposed to have? What are co- some of those key factors that you at least look at when selecting these venues as far as location, the venue itself, and really to okay. serve the purpose of maybe what the, uh, I mean, what's going to be programmed can dictate kind of what a good venue may or may not be. So what are those big yeah. things you guys look at when selecting venues? Well, I could uh, make a surprising uh, answer for some of the audience, but one of the most frustrating ones, the the very top one on the list that comes into play for that part of the logistics is availability. Mm. Is the venue available for when we want and intend to host the event? And if we're on a on a 10, 12 month planning cycle, most of the, the, the venues that would kind of fit into the category that we need to run something that is as large as a semifinal or what would be a regional event, um, they're booked. You know, or maybe they're only booked one or two days of the six, seven days that we need to have access to the, to the right. event or venue, which negates it. Um, so truly, one of the things that really does limit this sometimes is we do have a short planning cycle, but then a lot of these venues, they work on two, five, two and five year plans for sure. So oh, wow. it's very difficult. Yeah, it's very difficult for us to get into some of the venues and within that, you know, one year window. But we've taken steps, you know, to to help that also with you'll see that uh, we've discussed the list of the uh of the event partners that we have and stuff so, you know m- most of these are events now that we've had more than one year of experience with you know and some of these are going to be return venues and stuff so all those things play into role and that's one just aspect but the other one i mean ultimately any live event um it has to start with the programming and the programming dictates probably everything else okay um, and that is truly the presence of what it is for especially in live crossfit um, so whatever the programming needs will kind of dictate, you know, what the competition footprint is. And then once you establish yeah. the competition yeah. footprint is, then what does it build out there for a spectator and a, and a vendor experience? And then, okay, then now how many thousands of square feet do we need now? <laughs> then, and still equally as important, if the venue is available, it meets the programming criteria, it can host the, uh, the spectator capacity and the vendor. Um, how, how is it for travel and location and, and affiliate density? And like, where does it fit on the map that's going to make sense? I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, we could probably find some really yeah. great venues that <laughs> don't really meet all those criteria because of just location alone. It's like, um, oh, we maybe need to to get to this venue. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I hope I don't, we don't go down any rabbit holes with that one. But I mean, sometimes there is, you know, location is important too. But uh, but ultimately, that's not usually the, the the very first driving factor because you have to have all these these check boxes of, you know, it was, is it just logistically sound to be able to host the event there? So mm-hmm. we have to get through all those first, you know. When uh, you mentioned programming really being the the big thing, like, okay, we have to have, we have standardized programming back this year, different than we've had in yeah, the last yeah. uh, several years. Done your homework. Very good. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> I know. I love do, it. Do we have, it, well, I guess the question is, does it make it tougher when it's all standardized to find facilities that fit everything than it was? Is like, oh, well. We're doing our own programming, so we can just adjust on the fly based off the venue that he has. Does that, does that make it easier or harder with something standardized like that? Um, even um, if we go back previous year, mm-hmm. um, there was still a, 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 a large amount of CrossFit input and 
um, and work with each individual event organizer as they, you know, put together their own programming. Right. Um, it was almost still in a, in a very classic box, if you would, of like, all right, we would prefer 10 lanes of competition on one field of play that broadcast can, you know, can obtain some really great footage to share with everybody out there in the world and the community. Um, and, you know, each of the tests, you know, kind of have to have the, the depth and breadth that, you know, we would expect to send the right athlete moving forward from a semifinal to the game. So um, that in itself, even though it's kind of like just a template, um, that kind of like goes through and, and gets the logistics kind of off the table, like, you know, okay. what we need as far as a competition venue. So the classic, you know, regional footprint, you know, 90 by 150 foot competition <laughs> yeah. floor, 10 lanes, 10 lane rig that's able to do everything from rogue, you know, from mm -hmm. like pull ups, to rope climbs, the handstand push ups, the wall balls. I mean, uh, with all those things in place, you know, we, we can kind of fit the programming in there and uh, it'll make sense. Yeah, it's cool to go out and swim and run and and, you know, catch another location. Um, and that's awesome. And that's that's definitely part of, you know, the season in the bigger sense when we get to the games. But at regionals for the test, most times it can fit within the uh, the appropriate, you know, kind of box that is a, a very classic template for us. Nice. Well, I, I was just kind of curious. Is like, yeah, sometimes I, I like the standardization just from a storytelling standpoint and, and a feel mm -hmm. for, the, for the season. But it is, you know, for some events. Uh, and, and this is the thing, too, is that I think when you standardize the season, I'm going to get off topic, but now that I'm, I'm, I've already started, it makes the off-season events much more exciting in their own right. They do get to do their own thing. They do get to do the swim or the bay or the, you know, the ski slope in the desert in the middle of Dubai. Like, I think that's a really cool time to let these event organizers outside of the game season really stretch their wings when it comes to that. But in the standardized format, I do like that they have it out there. So, so let's look at the venues that we have or the, the locations that we have coming up. So we have three weeks of the okay. semifinals season and we've condensed from 10 down to seven, obviously with America we've condensed from four down to two Europe from two down to one week one, starting that may to 18th, 21st of the Northeast, which is at the orange County convention center in Orlando, Florida. And the second semifinal will be in Africa at the university of Witswatersland. Is that the same place they used last year? I remember they did. No, it we were in Cape Town last year. This year we're in Johannesburg. Okay. So uh, we've we changed venues. Uh, we do still, we still are partnered with the same uh, event okay. um, director. Um, but uh, this year we've, uh, we've, we've changed locations um, to a better location for, for the event. So um, that's going to be really exciting. Uh, you kind of glazed over the, uh, the, 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 four U S events, the two and the two European, like the, the 10 to seven was, <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that uh, beefed up things just a little bit as far as uh, occupy like occupancy. Yeah. That and athlete profile you know. got obese. <laughs> I got large <laughs> it grew, it grew quickly. Some of the logistical challenges when it comes to beefing that up is that just venue size, or was it like okay, we have to like we got to rewrite the playbook for these semifinals now that they're beefed up to this much. Um, well, well, super fortunate. Me and Boz got to spend some really quality time together in Tennessee and stuff and work through all logistics. Because as we just discussed a few moments ago, it all starts with programming. Mm -hmm. um, so knowing what we were going into with our athlete profile, um, these three specific owned and operated venues, you know, had to have, you know, maybe a little bit different criteria than what it'd be for the, uh, the classic semifinal athlete mm -hmm. profile you know, that we're repeating from last year. So uh, we knew we would be double the athletes um, for the individuals and teams. So right. um, that's a, that's a very large profile to get through, um, you know, a, a, the, the same competitive test that will be at all the other, you know, um, non-owned and operated partner events. So uh, yeah, there was some added logistics that we have to have in place for those events and those venues. And uh, there was some added, uh, um, uh, needs and requirements to get them to fit into what we'll have for the test for the uh, owned and operated semifinals. Uh, there are going to be some badass events. <laughs> oh, I can't, oh. I can't wait. I mean, I'm already geeking out over the equipment list for the open, let alone yeah. what's going to be coming down the pipe for semifinals. But we taught you touched on the, the semifinal that CrossFit is taking over in, in managing mm -hmm. from, uh, you know, systems broadcast. And that's, 
North America East, North America West, and the European semifinal. We'll, we'll get to the other four. Um, what really went into that decision for CrossFit to step in now, consolidate, and manage these three semifinals? Uh, it made sense. You know, right. I think it, I it made the, it made the most sense. Uh, no, really, it did. Um, you know, uh, personally, some of my take on it was that uh, you know, and I'm and I've been so tied to to all of the events over the years, and uh, and especially through the the regional seasons, um, the 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 own and operated CrossFit or the leadership role in that space, um, you know, was a really important time for the development of the sport as a whole you know, during those regional years, the formative years, you know, almost of what the sport is. So, you know, you can go to probably most of any other, you know, licensed events now and see, you know, um, the things that we have done over the years applied to their events, be it the floor set out, the athlete control, the, all the competition things you can see, you know, iterations of, you know, of what we developed over, you know, over multiple, you know, almost getting up close to double decades now in a few years of, yeah. of running competition, which is crazy. Um, so we could see that, uh, you know, we, we've pushed the, uh, the whole kind of uh, ethos and system forward. Um, and, and I think that we still need to have that place in, in, more, par in more parts of the season than just the games. Mm -hmm. um, the games in itself is just, that's, that's almost, <laughs> you, can't, you can't use that as a template <laughs> for anything else but the games. You just yeah. need that alone. I'm telling yeah. you right now. If anybody else tries to, more power to them. I would love to watch and see, but you've got to leave that one alone. That test mm -hmm. is is no holds bar, and you know that one is just going to always be what it is. Um, but to get the athletes, uh, the right athletes, to that part of the season, um, yeah, I think that uh, a leadership role for us uh, is really important, and uh, you know we should step up and, and take that opportunity and bring back a you know a regional esque you know semifinal that's probably a, a branch between you know, a semifinal and hopefully the, the athletes and the participants will have, you know, some of that games experience there, not because of program, but just because of, you know, it's an owned and operated CrossFit event. So mm -hmm. um, I hope they get to feel some of that. And then you look at week two, we have the North America West Pasadena convention center in Pasadena, California, Oceania, the Pat Rafter arena in Brisbane, mm -hmm. and then South America arena, Corioca, Carioca, Carioca one. In Rio de Janeiro, that's week two. And then week three, we have the European region. We'll be moving to Berlin, Germany at the Max Schmeling Hail. And then Asia in Mexico. Is that Busan, Korea? Is that the... Yeah. All right, good. Yeah, Korea again. When okay. we... Um, the, the one thing that everyone had a question of, especially last year, is we, we basically had four semifinals in like the Western United States. Mm -hmm. Event one, <laughs> drop to the next semifinal. That's that's geographically, it seemed that close. I know they were further apart, and Utah is like, okay, east and west coast. It feels like we went to the extremes of either side of the country. And I think the question everybody thought was, oh, we're going back to Del Mar if it comes to California, because <laughs> the Del Mar Fairground <laughs> a place in all of our hearts that were around there. Special. That being it's said, special. you talked about this being a different beast of a semifinal slash regional. That mm -hmm. facility, I don't think, was equipped to handle the size that we have coming up this season for the semifinals. Is that why we have this move away from what everybody was predicting was going to be the West Regional this year? Um, I would think in the uh, regional days, we pretty much maxed out Del Mar, um, but it was not <laughs> it was it was not off the table. And uh, yeah. I think if we came back to one of our first rules, uh, it may have very well been an availability issue. Mm. Um, you know, cause imagine the Tetris game of, you know, looking at a three week period and trying to fit. And this is, this is the bane of some of my existence. Sometimes we're trying to help Tetris these events together to, to select the, all of that criteria we already discussed, but, uh, and then for them to fit so that not every event is on like a week two, like how can we Tetris together seven right. different events over every continent in the world that does then fit into to meet the criteria for a great location, great test, and the great community and athlete experience. So um, pretty proud of this one right here. This is some of our really best work. Um, you know, um, we've had some of the, the same experience comes up just from having the Tetris together regional events, you know, for, for a decade. But 
um, you know, this one was a this one was a pretty big win here. Uh, the East Coast West Coast definitely couldn't be any more evident. I can tell you that. I mean, that's <laughs> straight up dirty south and straight up California <laughs> coast. I mean, it doesn't get any. That is East and West. Uh, doesn't make it easier for us though. It's more difficult for us. You can't yeah, get here across uh, the United <laughs> States in exactly. time. Exactly. It's um, you know when you look at uh, you're talking about earlier is just is the availability. The, uh, that squiggle piece comes down in the middle of your Tetris game and you're like, damn it. Now it's like we, we had everything, but this Sunday it would have been perfect. Uh, one question I, I did have and, and people have, have commented on is that on the ones that CrossFit is basically managing and running, there's a different number of days available during those semifinals. Is that more of a product of trying to balance the, the, mass volume that we have between maybe individuals and teams within that or what is the um i'm not sure you guys or might be waiting to release that information but you know there's four days in the the crossfit managed one three traditional ones that we have in the other four yeah uh and we released that information you know with intent but i guess the uh the 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 short answer is that just the athlete pro- pro- profile is double the other events so okay. With that being said, I mean, you're unless you want to start events at 6 a.m. and run till 10 p.m., <laughs> logistically, there is just it's right. It, yeah, it just comes down to simple uh, hours on the clock and, and math or, you know, it's not mm-hmm. very difficult to see that that large of event is going to need more time to get through mm-hmm. the, the athletes and the heat. So that it's just not a it's not a. 16, 18 hour day. So yeah. yeah. So the athlete profile is what it takes, you know, that, uh, that we would need more, more time available to us to be able to run all the athletes, but a lot of information that will be released after the first year, which, uh, which again, you know, we're not trying to hide anything. We're just letting those events know that, uh, you know, they're scheduled for more days, but the, the very upfront and easy answer mm-hmm. to ask changes by looking at is that there's so many more athletes, those events. And what's great about that is it's not just the athletes prepping, but, the fans, the community is like, hey, if you, if your buddy is going for it, then these are the days that they will be there. So make sure you buffer one in the bef- before and, and one behind because if this information wasn't released until much later, we could have missed a day of competition. Yeah. And as far as the four and three is concerned, the nice thing too is that none of these semifinals basically interfere with each other in terms of qualification. It's its own unique ecosystem that qualifies the same number of people. So you can afford to have some graces here to make sure you run a good quality event and it gets the right people to the CrossFit Games at the end of the day. Absolutely. Yeah, that has always been a big win for us in the uh, even semifinals, licensed event, regionals, any any of the scenarios that we are done. The, the, the most important thing is, you know, the field that you're competing against is the field that you're qualifying against. So that's always been important. So CrossFit's taking over for three of them. When it comes to stepping in for this, what, what are some of the things that really, I mean, you said is like, it seemed like the, the appropriate thing to do at the time, especially coming into this season. Yeah. What are a couple of the things that I would say that you're excited about having to step into a, a more, I would say, not focused role with these semifinals? Um. First, I think, well, I'll save the, the one comment for, for my last, but I think it's the most exciting one. Um, first, I think that uh, um, more intensive, less events, but more intensive um, is, is going to be a big win from a lot of standpoints, from a, from a lot of ways. How the community is able to intake, watch, be part of that segment of the season. Um, so, you know, that's over three weeks, they're going to get to see it all. So, um, and again, you know, within just two elements of the North American, within, you know, two weeks, you can see all of the North American athletes go, you know, on our mm-hmm. live stream. Um, and then we get to Europe. And then in one week during that one weekend, you can see all the European athletes go. So I think the uh, um, consolidating it, it is, is, been, is going to be a very big win and appropriate. Um, when there was so many different events, there was just so much for everybody to take in. Uh, it was just a lot. Um, and you could probably even understand it from a media standpoint, but I think it's also too, from an athlete and everything else, it's, it's, it's pretty concise for them. Um, it's a very short window of three weeks and, uh, and you know how your season should plan out starting right now. So, you know, you're open, you know, your quarterfinal, you know, your semifinal windows. And if you're that athlete that can get through those stages and move forward, it's all laid out for you right there, black and white. No surprises at, at this point at all. You know where you're going to be and when. 
Um, so I think that was the biggest win. Uh, and the other thing too, the, the, the part that I am most excited about, if that's the, uh, one of the, the questions that I was just asked is I am very confident. I said this many times, uh, this will, no, this will be, I've said likely before, this will be the, the largest CrossFit event in Europe to date with the wow. athlete profile that's going there. I, I'm pretty wow. confident in like that I'm event sure. of, who should qualify and be there. If you looked at, you know, all of those European athletes now in one place where we've always, you know, kind of moved them around, but all those athletes in one place in a great location, Berlin, I mean, like, and uh, the arena is 7,000 seats with two exhibition halls. And I mean, it's a massive facility <laughs> with like super easy. I mean, it checked all the boxes. Berlin is an amazing facility. It's one of our, our most favorite facilities of all the three that were owned and operated. Um, but it will truly be one of the most powerhouse, you know, CrossFit competitions, probably as close to games as you can get, you know, with an athlete profile and those who get to qualify out of there, it's going to be exciting. I think Berlin is super awesome. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, excited yeah, for all great semifinals great. just because I'm a, a, just a fan to begin mm -hmm. with and I'll extend it out to its true name is I'm a fanatic. I just, <laughs> and it's just so much fun, but that European regional. I'm with you. Like I can't yeah, yeah. wait. To, uh, I might just fly over there just to experience <laughs> for, for what it's going to be coming, <laughs> coming down the pipe for this, this season. Yeah. And then uh, awesome. the, the other question I had is that, you know, obviously we have four other semifinals that are not going to be managed directly by CrossFit, but you'll be leaning on event directors just as you have been for the last several years. And when you, when you look at these other semifinals, what involvement do you guys have with these event directors to make sure that they have the most support needed to put on a great semifinal as well? Yeah, we, we partner as deep with them as we ever had with any licensed event. So if you look at maybe the tiers of, of licensing with CrossFit, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and you're working your way from, you know, uh, being part of our game site and, you know, having some, uh, some connections on our social pages to as deep of a, of a partnership relationship. I think that's where we end up with semifinals. Um, not only this year, obviously with the, uh, the programming um, that will be um, comprehensive to all the semifinal events, um, uh, even previous years, uh, we we send, you know, event liaisons, uh, competition liaisons, and those people are there directly for what it is that, uh, that connects the event to um, both CrossFit and to, you know, what some of the kind of shared uh, experiences that we have. So people that are most experienced that are there helping the events, you know, even though they're all, many of these have run events for five, six, seven, maybe even 10 years. So they're not like they're not experienced event operators at all. Mm -hmm. uh, but we send people there to help them. And then now this year with the, uh, with all of the programming coming from CrossFit, um, that relationship will be even deeper. So uh, there'll be a liaisons that are there just for the head judging to okay. support the judging crews. There will be, um, we'll be delivering programming to all the events. Um, this all fits into a uh, uh, Boz's wheelhouse and category and kind of like on the competition side of our team. Um, but there will be a very deep connected relationship and along with too, um, you know, um, our, our sponsors and partnership teams, you know, work with them, um, you know, deeply and, uh, and help support their event from the financial standpoint, from, from many aspects. So it's all inclusive. It's competition, super intense this year, more than it's ever been. Uh, but then it's also, you know, it, it's also we support them. Noble's a, a, a huge supporter of all the uh, semifinals. Right. And, then, uh, and then we also do that with all of our, you know, all of our partners that are that are part of our events, you know, become part of their events, you know. So it's it's pretty cool. It's a really deep, deep partnership relationship. Yeah. We uh, this has come up on, say, the qualification side of like always wanting to be able to do more that we always want that we want to do the most we possibly can when it, when it comes from CrossFit to sport, to athletes, to community. And for an example is that, you know, the, the adaptive division won't have say online qualifier to the games this year where they had in the past, but the goal and the desire is to make sure, you know, instead of the three to four divisions that get to be in person at the games, they want to take a little sidestep here to hopefully next year, get everybody there, right? That's the end goal. And it's just going to take some time. And that's just a part of the process. This year, CrossFit steps in and takes over three semifinals, but we still have four that don't have as much involvement. Is there 
a des- I mean, obviously the desire is there, but how much have you guys talked about future plans to maybe one day maybe absorb all of these things, kind of like the old regional days in the past? Has that been discussed on the table at all? Um, that's always been on the table and that's not just, you know, adaptive, that's, you know, age group categories, teenagers, masters. I mean, right. all those have been discussions that have as long, as long as I can remember been ongoing discussions. I mean, right. uh, they've, they're, like, and I again, uh, to everything. All right, I think, I, I mean, yeah, it's, um, and it's, and it's really kind of a, a unique and, and, and difficult place because, um, I can tell you for, for, for a fact, you know, um, I'm a master's athlete myself, so we, we, we want, and that's important. Um, I have friends who are adaptive athletes. We want, and that's important. That that's, mm-hmm. that's needed. Um, you know, logistically and, and, um, and working through, you know, uh, all of those steps, you know, at some point it just has to add in layers. Right. Um, and if, and if, if the opportunity is there, I, I can promise you, you would be a hundred percent part of it. It's just that, you know, those, those layers and steps of logistics and everything else have to come together for it to be, you know, for it to work. And mm-hmm. it's a lot. It is, it is amazing. <laughs> and if this team only knew how much, if all the community only knew how much goes around the background, you know, just to pull off open announcements and the open itself from scorecards to programming to, to <laughs> media, to, I mean, they would they wouldn't want to even touch it. They wouldn't have nothing to do yeah. with it because it is months and months of work. And you think it's like, ah, it's just three workouts. Just push oh, a button and fix it all. Right? Just so it. much more. It's, 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 it's so much more. And as for <laughs> three workouts and a virtual competition, the, the, the layers is, it's not even as big as an onion. Whatever is bigger than an onion, I don't know what mm. it is, but the layers are, are, are expansive. It's a lot. Well, I mean... And it, it's good to know, and, and I love the the desire and the the push to be more open and transparent about the processes. And, and and some of that is is really to help all of us move forward and support the process of which is happening. I, I think that is huge because a lot of time the contention you you would get from the public is, well, we don't know anything, therefore we have to react to nothing. And in a vacuum. It's not always the, the, the easiest path is usually the negative, right? <laughs> <laughs> the, the most optimistic person can be very pessimistic when something goes wrong in a vacuum. And I love okay. that the, the approach CrossFit is, is coming to the table with, which is really different than what we've had in the past is, listen, these are the things that we're trying to do. These are the, the goals that we have. And yes, it might not be able to suffice and, and support what you want right now, but we're just laying all our cards on the table as far as what the plan and and desire is. So I I really do appreciate seeing that come from, you know, yourself and Oz and Dave Eubanks and all these other, and JB of of what the process is when it comes to that for you, you know, what part of that, I'm I'm sure it's like, he's like, Hey, open book. I see a hand. My son's here now. Say hi, buddy. <laughs> for for I'll, you, I'll somebody show up myself here. Yeah. Be a fur baby, yeah. but I'll, somebody will come by. Yeah, and then uh, uh, for you, is this process of being more transparent and open for the community. For for myself, it's like say an affiliate owner. The more transparent and open I am, as scary as that can be, when it's all said and done, I was like, man, I should have done this sooner. What's it like for you guys? Is like you know really pushing in this new direction of being open and transparent for the community. Um, I mean, obviously the listening to what everybody needs and wanted just from a sport perspective, as, yeah. as I hope has been very beneficial and paying off. Um, I think part of it too, though, I mean, there's, it's not like the, at least the, the people that I'm around a lot, it's not like that, uh, we, we, we haven't heard or we haven't not wanted to speak or we haven't been muzzled or any of those things, you know, have not really existed in you know, in the, in the friendships and the people that I work with a lot, um, maybe the, the forum wasn't available. Maybe the, uh, the, the timing of everything was just so short and tight that, you know, that we, that couldn't be communicated well enough. Maybe, um, some of the messages were heard, but they conflicted with other messages. And, you know, at some point you had to make a decision and maybe it wasn't the most popular decision at the time. Um, so there's a lot of aspects that come into it. And I think that uh, ultimately in the end, you know, we're all CrossFitters and we all love the, um, the, the, the sport, the, the community, the, the gym, the, you know, the training, we all love every aspect of it. And it's like, we just eat it up like candy. Um, 
but uh, you know, sometimes, you know, there's some difficult things that, you know, just happen in, in life and, and it's really, really hard to make everybody as happy as they can be, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that could, that's just, that's just part of life. And that's just a danger, right? Yeah. Like when you Such try to make everybody, happy, then nobody, yeah. <laughs> nobody ends up being happy. Nobody. Okay. <laughs> Well, it's that it's that parenting thing almost in some yeah well, you know, you said it's, once i was like if i were to write a parenting book that would be the title of it is separating yeah. your needs and wants because you know like my son just walks in the door is like hey i want to do this I was like no it's like it's like i need this. it's like no you want it yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. a difference right like the needs yeah. aren't sexy right the wants are when it comes to that so yeah. uh, and you I'm, want to go play with him but you need to do this right now and it's not no, I want like, wrong with it this is a one. Actually, I, I need him to go in the other room because I want to do this. <laughs> well, listen, I'm, you know, we got the everything's released. It's all out there. Go to games.crossfit.com. Check the Hopper email, right? That's the email coming from CrossFit and giving you up to date information as it comes out. If you're not subscribed to that, you can do it on games.crossfit.com. But for yourself, okay, so we finally got these out the door. <laughs> that was its own. Beast. Merry yeah, exactly. Thank you, Merry <laughs> Christmas, everyone. These are out the door, so we can chew on that for a couple weeks. For you, right? We got a little bit. Do you get a little bit of reprieve after we got these things pushed out the door and finalized? And then when does it? Uh, I know there's never really a reprieve. Let's be honest, but a uh, a less of a <laughs> a mountainous amount of things to do. But you know, do you get a little dip? And then when does it really start ramping again for you, full full blast? Uh, well, we're supposed to be on like holiday, but you know, it's, it's okay. We're, we're, yeah, we're on holiday. Um, it was calendar. And I was like, that's bullshit. Like, <laughs> yeah. um, I tell you what, it was a really great benchmark moment for us. And for a lot of people, because this is not just a, uh, this is not just a JMAC thing. This is, this is literally hundreds of people. So it was a huge benchmark moment. Um, uh, we had an all hands call followed by a, uh, you know, a release of the semifinal season and the hopper, like it went bam, bam, bam. And all the information was out there. Even some of the other media, I mean, people couldn't keep up with it because we were putting out so much information related almost directly to sport and stuff. Um, so it was super cool. And, uh, that does give us a little moment to be like, you know, look at what we've just accomplished right now, which again, seven week early for the open people are already signing up. Um, we've got this out there. Um, there's some really cool stuff coming from CrossFit also forthcoming. That's going to be amazing before the end of the year. You're going to see some amazing stuff, oh, man. some magic coming our way. <laughs> um, so, uh, I'm really excited about that. So yeah, it's been cool. It's been super cool. Don's doing an amazing job, great leadership. Uh, you know, it's really fun. Um, but no, we're, we're head down working. Um, January will be, January will be full pedal to the metal. Um, all these events, they need people to be there to run them the athletes need to know what's going on um vendors and sponsors are going to show up and, uh, and have a presence and you know and we may even add some little things in there that are more than just competition so uh you know so all that needs to be shared with the community that if you want to come and, and be part of the event a little bit more than sitting in a seat you know we'll give you that opportunity so I love you know that. presence with our gym and our edu there you know it's going to be great I love it. I, I love it that, uh, you know, all, like you said, EDU, gym, sport, all working together towards the same, same goal for the same reasons. And, uh, I love that we have all this information out early because now you know where it's going to be, you know, when it's going to be, you've got your regions, you've got your continental boundaries. Now let's get there in person because that's the one thing I really want to rekindle that we had back in the old crazy regional days that makes oh, the hair yeah crawl up on your skin just telling the stories of a certain event finale that the things went you know took place wherever it was and uh i know we can get back to there and i know people really want to be a part of that and now we have it early it's laid out so jmac thank you and all of your team for all the hard work you have done to get this set to get this out early and what you continue to do to make sure when it comes available the exciting things we have for our fans for and for our athletes coming up this game season Appreciate your time, man. Have a happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And I uh, look forward to hopefully seeing you in person sooner than later. We will. Very soon. Thank you very much. It was a lot of fun. All right, guys. Take care. Have a happy, uh, happy holidays and a happy new year. We'll see you guys around the bend.